Hey everyone, I'm Casey Hollins and you're watching the Sportsnet Digital Dose. We have Olympic gold medalist John Montgomery in studio today. Very happy to have you in. Thanks for coming. My pleasure. And we're talking today about, well, we're going to cover a few topics, but I want to start by asking you about Red Bull Crash Dice. I know you were an analyst for them last year and you're going to come back and be an analyst again. You're obviously no stranger to throwing yourself down a slippery slope because no. you won a gold medal in skeleton. So I'm wondering if you have any tips for the competitors this year. If they took tips from me, uh, I think that they would be barking up the wrong tree. Uh, I'm there to maybe call it as I see it, but to uh, provide them any insight th as to what they need to do to do their job better, mm -hmm. I think I'd be at a bit of a loss. Uh, their sport is not necessarily exactly the same as mine, mm -hmm. other than we're both going downhill on ice. Yes, very fast. Very to quickly. me, it's very scary. Have you had a chance to try the course, the I crash dice course? Last year, I got to try my hand on it. Friday night, after all the competitors mm -hmm. had gone down, I uh, went down by myself solo. I didn't have to jockey for position, but I got a, a really quick look at the challenges involved with uh, doing that <laughs> as fast with three other bodies around you trying to get to the bottom yeah. of the finish line as quick as possible. How, how did it go? It was challenging. Yeah. It was awesome experience. Uh, by the time I got to the bottom, I was absolutely gassed. The last mm -hmm. feature was a couple of camelbacks, and when I came to the bottom of that first uh, riser, I, you get this compression at the bottom, and you should be able to hold yourself up couldn't do it. My legs were totally shot by that point and I uh, cased it on my rear end and came across the finish line feet first, but oh, uh, yeah. but that's exactly well I would never make <laughs> it to the finish line, let's be honest. So if in your opinion, which do you think is more terrifying? Maybe maybe crash dice because you're not experienced with it, but they both look kind of scary to me. Yeah, for sure. They've got their elements of risk uh, that you're assuming every time you go down. But uh, having done skeleton enough, you're really concentrating on those nuances, the subtle details mm -hmm. of finding that hundredth of a second. And uh, a lot of the times your runs are quite similar. I think in Crash Dice, no two runs would be the same because yeah. there's so many elements uh, that are variable when you're going down the track as to what other people are doing, uh, the conditions, the tracks, all those sorts of mm -hmm. things. Now, speaking of skeleton, you have been training now. You took a year off. Uh, to design and build a new sled for yourself and now you're training for Sochi you're back kind of back on the horse Do you think that whole process was worth it for you? Do you feel like it was very much so I feel as that was the best use of my time uh, For that season was to stick around in Calgary do some mm -hmm. equipment development and testing and getting ready for the next two years That was in front of us at that point and uh, leading up to Sochi And I know that when I stand on the start line in Sochi win lose or draw I'll know that I've done everything within my power Mm -hmm. to prepare for that moment and I think that's all that I can ask of myself is did I do everything within my power mm -hmm. and I think thus far I can certainly say that I have and uh, with the next 13 months in mind continuing to work hard and, and prepare myself physically mentally and equipment wise uh, I'm going to continue to be able to say that. Tell me a little bit about the sled itself because obviously there was a lot of work that went into this that building this piece of equipment for you. Well, it's green, uh, not uh, <laughs> that dissimilar from the, the screen that's behind us at the moment. But uh, there's some subtle differences. We have really strict parameters that we have to build our sleds mm -hmm. within. But within that uh, framework, you can get creative with some things. And I was trying to develop a sled that responded the way that I wanted it to, not necessarily the way that uh, all the sleds that I had to choose from mm -hmm. uh, allowed me. And so we've created a few subtleties that uh, make it more tailor suited to my driving styles and my needs. And uh, we're getting there with the, the with the finish of it and those uh, finite changes that will mm -hmm. help us find those hundreds we're looking for. Has it given you more confidence in terms of the possibility of repeating a Sochi? <laughs> Uh, up until probably just a couple months ago, no. It was a frustrating uh, mm -hmm. challenge that we were being faced with, and we weren't necessarily winning uh, that challenge. You know, we were building a sled that at the time was deficient. It wasn't quite straight and true. And now that we've uh, addressed all those, those th issues, we are getting to the point where I can be consistent on the sled. And I think that uh, it is going to be part of the reason that uh, will allow me to be as competitive as I'm able to be in 2010. Mm -hmm. I think had I not gone down this road, I don't think I'd have that same level of success. Mm -hmm. If you do manage to repeat or medal in Sochi, it's a pretty fair bet that somebody's going to be waiting, waiting at the bottom for you with a pitcher of beer, right? I hope so. <laughs> you know what, if that's sort of the precedent that I set in 2010, perfect. You're happy with that? I am happy with that. <laughs> if anybody uh, meets me at the finish line with any sort of a frosty uh, beer beverage, 
to be happy about that. Yeah, have a smile on my face. Do you ever get a little frustrated, though, that some people, when they think John Montgomery and Skeleton, they think, oh, yeah, he's that guy that chugged the beer. Never. They don't think he's the amazing athlete that won a gold medal for Canada. No, if you could sign up for something, whether it was an Olympic gold medal or uh, fellow Canadians recognizing you as being authentically Canadian and somebody that they can relate to because A famous they, beer drinker. A famous beer drinker. Doesn't get much they, more Canadian than that. you to be an average Joe just like them, that would be what I would sign up for because it's very true. I mean, mm -hmm. there's nothing that uh, is different about me and the fellow who is driving the bus, if he's, I guess, in, in reasonable shape, that, uh, that separates the two of us. The only thing is that I uh, set lofty goals in the arena of skeleton racing and uh, I did what I could to be able to achieve them. And that's all that separates folks, uh, mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned. Well, you certainly charmed the nation with that. And nobody was complaining about it, that's for sure. Everybody <laughs> liked that celebration. Sticking with that, speaking of celebrations, another person that is kind of known for their celebrations or had a pretty notable one is Theo Fleury. And I know that he's one of your heroes, if you if you want to call yeah, it that. Absolutely. I'm wondering what it is about him that you, that makes you look up to him. I know he's also from your hometown well, he grew of up Russell. about four houses down. I yeah. mean, uh, every house in Russell is about four houses yeah. down because there's just that many. Um, uh, but I think why I also identified with Theo was because he was a from a small town, my mm -hmm. hometown, but he was small in stature just like I was. I was always second in line on picture day <laughs> because I was knee high to a grasshopper even at an older age, getting mm -hmm. close to grade 12. But uh, I identified with being small in stature. It was part of who I was, still how I almost identify myself as mm -hmm. being a small person because I was for so long. And uh, if he was able to accomplish the feats that he did, uh, world junior champion, Olympic champion, Stanley Cup champion, all these things, uh, at that size, five foot six in a, in a, you know, a mammoth dominated game where guys are six foot four plus, then there would be no limitations as to what I could accomplish if I was prepared to work hard and mm -hmm. uh, give everything of myself to reaching those goals I've set. Excellent. So that, that resounded a lot with me. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Before I go, I have to ask, I know you're living in Calgary right now and you're from the prairies and I'm yeah. from Calgary as well. So I have to ask, right. are you a fan of the Calgary Stampede? Uh, the Stampede or the yeah. Stampeders? The, the Stampede. <laughs> the Stampede, then yes. Yes? I'm very much a fan of the Stampede. No, you can't be a fan of the Stampeders. You have no. to be a Rough Riders fan. Boom, you got it. I was born in Saskatchewan. I only lived there for the first five years of my life, yeah. but I have no choice. I was I'm born and raised in Manitoba, <laughs> but closer in proximity to Taylor Field than I was Winnipeg Stadium. Oh, there you and go. our town was viciously divided. And, and if you start that way, then there is no turning. You wear, have to be a Rough Riders you're fan green, for life. You're green to the soul. Yes, green yeah. to the soul. Anyway, that's all the time that we've got. Thank you so much for coming in, John. My pleasure. And check back here in a little bit for another Sportsnet Digital Dose.